Hi guys, welcome to Lab 02 on computerized control. Today's video is about the second approach to the adaptive cruise control system, specification and design using frequency domain methods. The main objective is to understand how to the frequency response methods are used in the context of discrete time systems. Regarding recommendations, you should prepare a report using the provided template and do not forget on improving the KPI value to win some delicious chocolate. Have fun! Let's just take a look on the plant under consideration. The goal is to control the distance between the two vehicles, despite the disturbances on wind speed, road slope and foregoing vehicle speed. This is the technological scheme of the problem, with the control action actuating on the main vehicle's engine to keep the reference distance to the foregoing vehicle. In previous sessions, we have developed a complete model, then the linearization process leading us to this transfer function. That together with the provided set of parameters are the baseline for the control design. So, defining the parameters on the script file, we get the numerical version of the transfer function in the continuous time domain. At this point on, we will focus on the frequency response and its representations, always with the objective in mind of modifying the dynamic behavior of the closed loop system, this is the control system. Before going discrete, let's take a look on the bold plot of FS. A question arises can you identify the integral effect on the bold plot? The next step is, of course, going to the discrete time domain. The sampling period was already set in 0.1 seconds, or 10 samples per second. And the discretization process is exactly the same as seen in previous lab 01. The difference now is that we want to analyze Fz from the frequency response perspective. We start by defining the Nyquist frequency and the plot the board of the discrete time equivalent. We can see that the plot deviates from the blue line as it approaches the Nyquist frequency. And the question comes up, what do we have beyond this point? As seen in previous videos, at this point we introduced a delay in the controller, as we cannot process the control law in no time. We can transfer this delay to the new augmented plant FDZ develop the controller without any restriction regarding the pulse zero difference. After the design process, the delay is returned to the controller for testing and implementation. Again, back to our script file, we add the delay to the plant transfer function and plot the boat. As we expected, the delay will only affect the phase as it does not change the shape of the magnitude of the signals. I leave here a question for your reflection. Why does the phase have more 180 degrees after the inclusion of one sample delay at the Nyquist frequency? From this point on, you know the drill. We don't have enough room for applying our knowledge on how to modify the boat plot using the asymptotic behavior. So we go to the parallel universe where a new frequency nu is defined, and without the Nyquist frequency limitation. We apply the bilinear transformation to get FDW. As a reference, I have included here the image of FZ as well. Furthermore, we compute the main performance indicators using the MATLAB command margin. Thus, our starting point is approximately minus 10 degrees phase margin. But we'll come back to this. So next stage is design the controller. Step by step, we specify the control system. We design the controller. We discretize the controller, 
and we test it. As you know by now, before starting any design process, we need to specify the control goals in an appropriate format. In the current case, we need to specify our goals in the frequency domain terms. In this case, the specification of the control system, the so-called H star, goes through the process of selecting the damping factor or overshoot by means of establishing an adequate phase margin. And the response times by means of the gain crossing frequency that matches the closed loop bandwidth. Before proceeding, let us make some revision on the impact of the phase margin on the damping factor and overshoot. So we have this example where we change the open loop gain, changing the point where the boat plot crosses the 0 dBs, resulting in different phase margin values. As we lower the gain, we see 15 degrees provides 65% overshoot and the rise time of 2.4 seconds, 30 degrees phase margin, 45%, 3-1 here, 45 degrees phase margin, it lowers to 25% overshoot in 4.1 seconds, 60 degrees for 10%, and with 70 degrees, we have 0% overshoot. Consolidating this dependency, we can establish a direct relation between the desired overshoot and the phase margin to be specified. For instance, an overshoot below 25% corresponds more or less to a phase margin of 45 degrees. You can approximate this curve by this straight line. So a smoother response, less overshoot, corresponds to more phase margin. The same for the relationship between the rise time and the gain crossing frequency. The rise time is approximately 1.7 divided by the gain crossing frequency. So corresponding to more bandwidth, you have a faster response. Although we have said that for the frequency range of interest, omega and nu go equal, for the sake of accuracy and correctness, we have to compute the specified gain crossing frequency in the new frequency. Thus, we need to apply the inverse formula converting omega CG in new CG. So let's get back to our script file, specify the rise time starting with one second, 45 degrees for the phase margin, and then compute the gain crossing frequencies. As expected, the difference between omega and nu is less than 1%, but we have to be sure. In the both plot, we have the FD plot, and the marks with the specified gain crossing points and the required phase margin. So this is the point where the blood plot should cross 0 dBs and this is the phase margin that we are specifying. So we need to push up this gain and cross over this phase margin. We start by identifying the current value of the gain at new CG and multiply by its inverse value. The result K0 is equal to 1.69, has an impact on the current phase margin going worse from minus 10.5 degrees to minus 14.5 degrees. So magnitude curve goes up and the phase margin gets worse. As we did in the first lab work, we can conclude that it's not possible to adequately control the system just by using a proportional controller. We can conclude that, here again, we need to increase the complexity of our controller. And in the scope of the frequency domain, we can correct the phase margin using a compensator without changing the bandwidth. Starting from the usual structure, we have the expression of the lead compensator together with the K0 value 
already determined, and we need to compute the values of t and a. The value of a derives directly from the magnitude of phase we need to add to the frequency response. And then, with a already determined, we set the value of t. So back to the script file, we implement these formulas and the controller come up almost automatically, verifying the phase margin and the crossover frequency. Now, can you do better than this? Here we can see that the expected step response and verify that although we have a specified a one second rise time, the control system response is 15% faster. We can use this margin for relaxing the requested phase margin on the compensator. Additionally, we have a gain margin of 3.9, around 12 dBs. What do you think of this? Please comment on your report. This is the final expression of the controller. Finally, we have the controller, so we take it to the simulator. And define the controller by inputting the parameters. The value associated to UK minus 1, the value associated directly with EK minus 1, and the value associated with K minus 2. Run the simulation and voila, a KPI of approximately 80. We find your controller and win the bar. So this is all for today. Thank you very much for watching. Press like, don't forget to subscribe, and see you next week. Thank you very much. Bye bye.